G'day everyone, this uh, video today I'm going to be covering the toothwort family. So the toothwort is a member of the mustard family. It uh, is closely related to horseradish actually. And this uh, plant right in front of me here is one of three native varieties of toothwort that grow here. This is the large leaf toothwort. Additionally, we have the common toothwort and the cut leaf toothwort. Right beside this flowering plant, we have solitary leaf. Here it's trifoliate, meaning it grows an arrangement of three leaves, like we can find in poison ivy. This plant is remarkably easy to identify. Leaves are very, very strongly serrated. The serrations in this leaf are rounded like the head of a shovel and gradually come to a point. So they're uh, quite large and they kind of remind you of the head of a shovel. The center, where the uh, leaves come out of the main axis, are equal in length as opposed to poison ivy that has a longer stem in the middle leaf than the two beside it. Also, one thing unique to the toothwort is on the bottoms of these leaves, they are very bulged and pronounced. They're not symmetrical with the top of the leaf here. So this bulge down here is very consistent with toothwort. The underside of the leaf is pale and has a silvery white appearance. And you get a strong idea of the veins here. The stem is hairless and gradually coming to a uh, very light pink on the bottom of the stem here. Now this plant, being a member of the mustard family, it does have edible leaves, but typically people harvest this plant for its root system. It is very shallow, almost running just along the underside of the ground here. Super easy to dig up. There's the root system exposed here. This has a flavor very typical of horseradish, only the heat is super short-lived. It's an intense flavor. It's used often as a seasoning. The Native Americans used to crush it up and add vinegar to it and make relish with it. You can still do that today. So as you can see, these are running along the ground. Just hidden up by the foliage here. Very easy to dig up. You can see some spots where some previous plants have grown within the root too. So this is a big running system here and these will often carpet a forest floor. There's more over there. They're all around, sparsely spaced out. Right over here, you can see a bunch of toothwort growing with a sarsaparilla. Some little sarsaparilla here. The roots bear a good resemblance to each other. Sarsaparilla is brown though, and toothwort root is uh, much more yellow color. It's a lot more tender as well. Sarsaparilla root's pretty tough and woody. And additionally, sarsaparilla root penetrates deeper into the ground and is a lot harder to pull out. So both the common toothwort and large leaf toothwort are very very similar to each other. They're very hard to tell apart. The distinguishing feature is common toothwort when it branches they branch opposite from each other or very very marginally step down almost sub opposite. The large leaf toothwort has a much greater step in between where the two leaves branch off. Some will argue that large leaf toothwort grows bigger than the common leaf toothwort, but I've seen both species of varying size. So that alone really isn't the best uh, identifying characteristic. These two can also grow mixed in with each other. You have to exercise caution because the cut leaf toothwort can look like uh, members of the buttercup family to inexperienced foragers, and you sure don't want to harvest a buttercup. I'll post a couple of pictures of the cutleaf toothwort in my video, but the cutleaf toothwort, it grows in the northeast. It's uh, narrow, very deeply toothed leaves. Looks like a buttercup leaf almost, not nearly as broad as these species here. They're uh, deeply toothed and they're in whorls around the stem. The whole plant itself grows in between 8 to 14 inches tall. It flowers in the early to late spring, just like these species here. But again, they're whirled in groups of three around the stem.
So that's a good uh, thing to keep in mind as well. The cut leaf toothwort root looks and tastes identical to the common toothwort and the large leaf toothwort. So that should be uh, an easy identifying feature of that plant should you stumble upon it. If you're looking for a specific type of wild plant and you happen to come across it, take note. Look at the various surroundings. What other plants does it like to grow with? You'll find that many plants, especially in our native species, typically like certain conditions. So we have a lot of toothwort in this area. So we have blue cohosh growing with it, sugar maples, basswood, very sparse amounts of poison ivy. There's beech trees here, lots of ferns, standing water in some areas. So it's a moist deciduous forest with about 50-50 shade sunlight. There's no evergreen trees here at all. So that tells me that it probably doesn't care for acidic soil very much. So these are some things to take in mind when you're looking for plants because it'll help you find patches in the future. There's a lot of trilliums here as well. There's trout lilies and I know there's leeks here but they're done. So that'll help narrow the scope a lot when looking for certain plants as well as many other types. One of the things with toothwort is because it works on a tuberous rhizome system for its reproduction is if you get some and either A don't use it or B want to plant it, this piece right here, you can plant that somewhere and start a whole new colony. It'll reproduce provided it's fresh. So this next plant that I'm going to show you, garlic mustard, also known as jack by the hedge, is a widespread and invasive plant. In many areas, it's illegal to actually transplant this plant, but it is a very, very good plant in terms of its uh, nutrition. This will beat the pants off almost any green you can find in a grocery store. It's very nutritious and it can be eaten in large quantity. It's a member of the mustard family, obviously by its name, but uh, it has a very strong garlic-like smell. The tap root is very similar to horseradish, but it doesn't have near the heat and it doesn't persist. This plant's a biennial. First year plants can be found along the ground. Very small plants, tender. These are typically the type of plants you're gonna wanna pick. All those second year plants are also useful. They have more fiber, they're tougher, and they don't have as strong of a garlic-like taste. The roots of the early second year plants can be harvested and used in many ways that you can use uh, toothwort or uh, horseradish, for example. The second year plants grow up and uh, develop these clusters of very striking white flowers can be seen from a distance. The flowers have four petals. If you find a plant that looks similar and crush it up and uh, you don't smell that garlic smell, then you don't have garlic mustard. There are no poisonous lookalikes to this plant, although uh, some similar looking plants, which are medicinable and edible, can be uh, catnip when it's early enough, um, gill over the ground, or uh, creeping charlie, as some people call it, are lookalikes. But again, it has no poisonous lookalikes. This plant defends itself from insects through its very strong garlic like smell because insects don't typically like that smell. As well, it contains a natural antifreeze, which allows it to persist through the winter. This plant can be harvested under the snow and generally remains green all winter. You can harvest this plant well before any other springtime plant is ready. One very unique identifying feature of garlic mustard is its S-shaped root. It has a dual curve in the root that makes it look like an S. There's no exceptions at this plant. They all have this striking feature. Even the small first year plants. Here's another one, same thing. Here's a smaller one. Small tap root, still has that double curve in it, makes it look like an S. I had the experience this year of actually using this plant uh, with a club called the Lanark Wild Food Club, actually. I learned how to make uh, garlic mustard pesto and infused oil. We even made omelets with it, it's quite delicious, great plant. 
So this plant itself, some identifying features about the plant, mainly its garlic-like smell and odor. Leaves that are alternately arranged and whirled around the stem as you go up it. The tooth margins in the leaves are very strongly scalloped. They're uh, rounded. They don't really come to a point, although at the end you can see where the vein is a very, very subtle pronunciation in the end of the uh, scallop there. In the early years, they're uh, kidney shaped. The larger ones in the biennials, the second year plants, become more of a heart shape. They almost look like a leaf off of a poplar or a cottonwood or a big tooth aspen. They're very similar to that. First year plants are more of a kidney shape. They're not as heart shaped, not as triangular. They smell strongly of garlic in compared to their uh, second year. So these plants uh, usually spread through disturbed soil. They'll grow anywhere. They can get a foothold uh, along roadsides and open woodlands, anywhere there's a lot of traffic to help them spread. As you can see here, it's been a lot of activity and there is a large amount of these plants here. The stem on this plant is hairless, pale green. So just to summarize, it's garlic smell, that S-shaped curve in its root, and it's heart-shaped scallop leaf white flowers if they're available, although not always, especially in the early spring. White flowers, four petals.